Hey guys, welcome to Negotiated Art Study uh, Houdini Procedural Modeling. In this series of videos, we're going to take a look at how we can build our first procedural asset. And we're going to very excitingly make a procedural fence. Okay, so this lecture is titled Animal Crossing Every Possible Fence. Okay, <laughs> it's quite a bold claim, I know. Okay, so let's jump into it. So, first thing we're going to do is we're going to identify a problem or a game design challenge or a game development or a game art challenge that we can uh, that we need to solve and in this hypothetical scenario our game requires some fence assets to be created okay so not the most exciting game art task in the world you probably wouldn't ask your best artist on your team to be uh, spending weeks and weeks making fences um, so these fences in order to be you know useful and work they must conform to any possible shape so that means whether at runtime the player can place them down themselves or a level designer can place them down in unreal without having to go and modify or manipulate any points or vertices or primitives the system takes care of itself the procedural system will conform to any possible shape on any terrain so that's one of the one of the goals of this procedural system that we need to design also, we need to be able to mix it up a bit. The, the shape of the fence post, the shapes of the panels, all that variety must be accommodated in our system. And we'll look at a few ways in which we can do that. And also how we could possibly import, um, you know, existing art assets and use that in our system. Also, it's got to be parameter driven. So in Houdini, we can create lots of user driven parameters that will significantly alter the look of the of the asset that we're doing so this means that when we hand this off to a level designer um, who might be working in unreal they don't need to know how to use houdini they can just drag some sliders and plug some numbers in and they'll get a totally different look okay so it's up to us as tech artists to build that system and houdini allows us to do that and then export it into unreal engine and importantly uh, our system must take care of these attributes that we need in, in engines such as UV coordinates, uh, potentially vertex color for material blends and things like that. We need to be generating that in our procedural system to ensure that it fits into our pipeline. Okay, so this is just me identifying, sort of outlining the problem as I see it. You guys will be required to do this as part of your assessment. So you'll need to go out there and investigate a problem that you can solve using uh, a procedural asset in this way. So start having a think about how this could, you know, influence your idea uh, generation perhaps. This is from an absolutely amazing article that I found uh, during my research. It's called Animal Crossing, Every Possible Fence Ranked. And it is just uh, an outstanding article. I've put the link in there. So you can see that someone has gone through Animal Crossing, looked at all the different fences and given them you know, a, a, a tier ranking uh, based on how they look, how aesthetic they are, uh, you know, what they do, do they obscure your view? Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant stuff. Uh, and there it is. And as you can see, you know, Animal Crossing has got some interesting fences. Um, all of these will have been <laughs> created by a game artist somewhere. Um, and you can see we've got tons of variety. This, these are just a few examples. Uh, what we're going to work on is we're going to keep it simple. We're going to build a procedural version of this simple wood fence that you see here. But once we have built the system, it then becomes trivial to swap out the uh, geometry assets to create something like this or something like this. It's the underlying system that we're going to work on that will drive this procedural nature of it that will tie it all together. So let's break down the solution. I'm just going to give you a quick overview of, of how I would approach something like this. And then it, it'll become more apparent when we jump into Houdini. But I just wanted to give you a bit of a broad overview now so you can have it in your minds as we progress. Um, so we're going to be creating a bunch of discrete systems. We're not going to all pile it in onto one thing and just sort of chuck nodes in there and hope it all kind of works itself out. We're going to be a little bit more organized than that. So we're going to start off with an initial curve. So this will dictate the placement of the fence. So you can imagine just drawing down a simple line on a grid 
and then the procedural system will populate that with the fence assets. Okay. And we're going to build some simple geometry for the fence posts and the corner supports. Um, again, just keeping it simple. This is an area, and we'll, we'll sort of touch upon it as we get to it, but these are the areas where you can really start to expand the complexity of your of your uh, procedural assets. You might want to bring in existing assets that you've got on disc, or you might be working with a game artist who's doing some amazing sculpts, or you know, working with a material artist who's got some really amazing wood materials that he wants you to use. This is really just the tip of the iceberg, and we're just going to start simple. But wherever possible, I'll sort of indicate where those little hooks are, where you can sort of bring in other people or bring in other art. Uh, to really uh, complement your work. And then once we've got those two systems, you know, we've got the geometry and we've got the curve, we're going to use a node called copy to points. And that will just copy those fence posts onto that curve. But as we'll see, it's a little bit more complicated than that because there's certain attributes that we need to be aware of. There are certain factors that we need to consider before this will copy in a logical way. Um, the copy to points node is, if you ask any Houdini user, it's one of the coolest nodes uh, to use because it can do so much. It's not just copying, we can do an awful, awful lot with it. So I wanted to introduce that to you guys pretty early um, because it is kind of one of the, the cornerstone nodes in uh, Houdini uh, surface operators. So yeah, we'll look forward to that. And then once we've done, once we've got our system up and running and it's working in a logical way, um, we'll bundle it all up into this thing called a digital asset. Okay, and these digital assets can be imported into Unreal Engine to be used by a um, level artist. So if the level artist wants to place a fence around a building, all they would need to do is draw down a simple curve and our procedural system will take care of the rest. Okay, so that's the real, the real beauty of these procedural systems is that we're saving an awful lot of work. You know, the, the game artist isn't going back and modifying the fence so it can, you know, fit a different size building. This completely procedural approach is, is really speeding up our workflow. So with that, let's get started. Thank you very much.